Okay, uh, in the best introductory note, he said, self-proclaimed handsome guy with a big heart. I'm not sure about the big heart, but check it out for yourself, huh? Not bad, huh? Hi, my name is David Wu. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about how and why I went to look for my uh, ancestral roots, uh, at least for this session, uh, on a bicycle. So I cycled from my hometown, Alistair, um, all the way to my ancestral home in China, and it took me about 69 days to get there. Well, it took me 69 days. I uh, started this little uh, social effort, uh, uh, community effort, which I ripped off from Nike. I haven't got suit yet. Uh, that character in the middle is my surname in Chinese, and I used this, I adopted this for my uh, uh, cycle to China. So, just Wu is basically a, a rally call for Malaysians to stop whining and complaining about things not happening and do something for the for the needy folks, for you know people who basically need some assistance, some kindness. Yeah. And uh, a brief introduction. Last last year, I took a walk, a solo walk from KL to Kota Bahru to raise money to help the victims. We raised about 150,000 ringgit and we fixed 10. <laughs> Okay, this is my grandfather, uh, Mr. Ng Po Kiet, whom I've never met because he left this world when I was about two months or three months old. Um, he is my first, he will be our first uh, direct ancestor who arrived from China. When he arrived in China, uh, from China, uh, this was where it sort of like, uh, a bit blur because none of us really know exactly when he arrived, but I think we pretty much came to a consensus. He arrived from um, China around the age of 10 to maybe 12 years old, on his own. Um, he, so, so you know, uh, what we have is a family WhatsApp chat group that my uncle, my youngest uncle, had created, which there he is. And, um, and it started with a series of photographs about old, uh, about family history, my grandfather's pictures and old family photos, and it stirred my imagination a little bit. So, um, grandfather, grandmother, that's my dad, my aunts, my aunts, my aunts. So I'll bet there's four of them still around, yeah. Uh, so my grandfather was born on Christmas Day, arrived at the turn of the century, 20th century, on a boat by himself, and we believe he was sent for by relatives who already had landed in Penang. So that also sort of satisfied my curiosity somewhat. Uh, this is a family picture, probably taken in the 70s, I think. Yeah. Um, this is the old family house, my great, my late grandfather's house, which we affectionately call Lao Toy, which I think means uh, old house, I suppose. Yeah, uh, it's modeled after a, a Malay kampung house, but it's built on stilts, uh, uh, concrete stilts, and it's a huge house. And there are many memories of you know playing around in that house. It's uh, it has eight bedrooms, I think, a huge altar room, and uh, lots of memories there. Uh, and this was also the venue where we started the cycle. We, we left from this location, which is now, the house is demolished, it's now a, a, a public car park, yeah? So we had a bit of a ceremony there. Um, old picture of my grandfather and my youngest uncle. Uh, grandfather came and started life as an errand boy, you know, in a, in a goldsmith shop. Uh, he was sent from Penang to Alistair and worked in this little, uh, in this, in this uh, uh, goldsmith shop that's, that's called Wong Hang. And it's still there, the building is still there in Alistair. And he started life as a errand boy, basically, just cleaning up the shop, you know, probably making coffee, cleaning up the display shelves and whatnot. And he worked his way up and eventually became a very successful man by any standard. Um, that that automobile is, was the, 
I was told by my uncle, was the first Nash that was brought to Malaysia. That's a very old car. So my grandfather did, used to do a lot of business in Penang as well in his late, later part of the year. And he would travel every Friday to Penang, conduct business, come back, and visit his children who were mostly sent to Penang for education. Uh, here's a picture of my grandfather and, and my grandmother in Hong Kong visiting my uncle who was studying there, pursuing his medical degree. And the significant part about this picture is, I think, is this was the closest my grandfather ever came or ever went to being uh, near his place of birth. So my grandfather left China but never ever went back, never set foot in China again, right? Um, Right, so here's, this is a picture of my great-grandfather, and this was the picture that first struck me and stirred my interest to go search for my ancestral home, because I was just captivated by the fact that, my God, I don't know who this man is, he looks so fierce, you know? And, but it's the inscription, and I'm Chinese illiterate, I can't read it, but I'm told that this is his name, and somewhere down there is where his village is, the village it came, came from. So it's not, I think in the old days, they don't just address it as Bukit Tinggi or, you know, or Gomba or Talijai, something, I'm not sure, those who can read Chinese, maybe you can, you know, it's, it's a bit more elaborate. And I was very fascinated by this, and it stirred, I think this was the seed that actually was planted in my curiosity to find out more about my family. And then, oddly enough, following my walk to Kelantan and my fundraising projects, uh, a, 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 a rebranding telco rang me up and said, hey, if you want to do something else for society, can we help you? Would you like to do something else? And I said, yeah. And so we sat and we hashed ideas, plans, what we're going to do. Uh, and I said, you know, I've been thinking about cycling to, well, around the world, to be honest. And they couldn't, they couldn't meet that obligation. So we settled for China. And the first destination was actually supposed to be the Great Wall of China. And then when we settled the meeting, I said, you know, there's no story behind that. This, this is a boring, dry subject, cycle to the Great Wall of China. Anyone can do that. It's physical. Well, I say anyone can do that. But. And then I gave them a script. And I, I told them, I said, why don't we merge and, uh, the ideas and, and have me cycle to my ancestral home so that we have a Malaysian story, a story that we can tell Malaysians about where we come from. And it's a little bit of my thumbing down, you know, thumbing my nose on those who say, you know, like Tong San. And so, yeah, I'll buy Tong San on my bicycle. And also because, you know, my dad, my grandfather had taken, you know, had come to China, from China in such difficult uh, uh, fashion, you know, all over the boat with a shirt on his back. And I think it's only after that I tried to find out where he came from in an equally difficult uh, uh, fashion. So, on 6th of May, which is my birthday, uh, we set off. And we started from Abusa uh, and rode into Thailand. And, you know, to, to showcase our Malaysian Bole spirit, I recruited two very old men <laughs> who came along. And, you know, one of them's here, the other one's on a cruise somewhere in South America. So, a big round of applause for Patrick for us. Now, a lot of you may not know this because you only get to hear his voice, you don't really see his face or you know. But Patrick has polio and he completed 1300 kilometers of cycling on a quadrice, 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 something with four wheels. <laughs> and we made it to Bangkok safely, in one piece. So they accompanied me all the way to Bangkok, right? Um, um, there you go, that's his squad cycle. Yeah, I got this right, this right. And that's David at the back. And we were approaching Hua Hin then. This was taken when we uh, completed our first thousand kilometers. Big celebration, you know, I mean, who would have thought a 69 year old man with polio could, could do it? But he did, amazing. Um, and Bangkok, eventually. So, oh, so uh, because I only have 20, 25 minutes to do this, I won't tell you about how Patrick had to climb three flights of stairs to go to the top of global bar. I didn't even say that for some reason. Um, so, and then they obviously dumped me there, and 
we had to say goodbye, they left, and I'm now left in Bangkok to continue the rest of the journey by myself. Um, which was a very terrifying thing. And Java, Java Sadiq, my good friend now, was also there in Bangkok to, 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 to greet us when we arrived, and he's also here today. And, uh, so on the same morning, we had Patrick and the rest left. In the afternoon, Java also departed back for Kuala Lumpur, and, and I went back to the bar and found myself sitting, you know, getting very nervous. And so I'm out of Bangkok, and the first thing that happens is I get pulled over by a policeman in a BMW and says, Excuse me, but you're not supposed to be on the highway. And they gave me an escort, you know, gave me a police escort and, and took me off the highway, which sort of set the tone for the rest of the ride, you know, lots of unexpected things. But along the, the long trip, uh, I, saw some, uh, I saw many, many things. We saw a lot of temples in Thailand. I arrived at Uncle Wat on my bicycle. Not many people can say that. I saw Paul Pot's grave, which is something that happened by chance. Yeah, I was exiting uh, Cambodia, trying to get back to Thailand, and I saw this sign that says Paul Pot's uh, Paul Pot is cremated here. And I just followed the trail and I found it. Paid two U.S. dollars to go see it, right? And it's this is one of the highlights. It's very eerie standing there. Um, I saw the mountains of Cambodia, which the landscape is unbelievable and quite daunting. I cycled around this big rock for hours. It never left my sight for two days. This is Vietnam, beautiful landscape. Uh, the pine fields in Vietnam are stunning. It is very pretty. You know, and, and you also you also see a lot of uh, uh, development that's going on in Vietnam. Huge bridges, everything's just big. You know, good roads, big bridges, like one of these, which I crossed during a storm, and it was blowing very heavy. And you know, when you're up there on a bicycle, you feel very vulnerable. You feel like you're about to get blown off and die. I got to wear Hanoi on the bicycle, and on July the 8th, I crossed finally into China. Um, probably with the Malaysian flag. <laughs> and this is the end of my journey. It is, after 4,000 kilometers, I got to Taishan, which is the ancestral city that we, or my ancestors, came from. It's very bizarre when you arrive after such a long trip and there's no one to greet you and you just ask yourself, what's next, you know? What do I do now, you know? Yahoo! You know? Right, so, so after I've reached, I took a break, drank some orange juice, found a hotel, slept, woke up the next morning and we had some film crew flying from Malaysia and I, I was Oddly, it's just reluctant to go start searching for it because I was so afraid I would fail. That's the honest truth, I didn't know where to start. All I had was a bit of information from the family and that photo of my great grandfather as a guy, nothing else. So I was a bit reluctant to start and I gave myself three full days to do this because I was on a deadline, I had to come back by a certain day. And, and so the, the next day, you know, all we did was just walk around you know, get some food, just, just relax. And the, the following day, we started the search. So we found a taxi uh, and hired him for the day. Uh, and he took us, you know, I gave him some guides and he was like, okay, I know where it is. So he drove us and we found this place. Um, and of course, when you get there, you know, um, your heart's pounding. You're like, oh God, I'm here. I mean, is it? Is it true? Is it real? I'm, I'm off right. And, well, basically this is where the ancestral temple is. It's very close to my ancestral village. But this is the, 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 the temple where the uh, ancestral temple is, where all the relatives sent information back to this temple to say, you know, we've had 75 children, and here's the list of the names of the children, and so on. So the family tree keeps running. Um, and a lot of representation from Malaysia. So a lot of... Uh, 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 I don't know, the 
souvenirs and, and, and plaques and whatnot to indicate that a lot of Malaysian uh, Taiwanese, you know, had visited. Uh, and you know, being a Chinese illiterate, I am quite lost when I'm there, right? But offer my prayers to ancestors. I, I did ask one of the locals. I said, "Hey, you know, is your surname is your surname uh, 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 Wu by any chance?" <laughs> And he goes, yeah, everyone in this village is called who? <laughs> <laughs> a bit incestuous, but... Um, right, so, so now, when we were there, then we were told, you know where you think you're supposed to be, and oh, here we go again, you know, so, sort of despondent. Right, uh, so we jumped into the taxi again, and some local guy saw some whatever we wrote, and just, yeah, 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 I know where it is. And took us into this other village, which then I got on the taxi, not terribly excited. I I just yeah, you know, just waiting to be disappointed. And this is what I saw. Okay, it's a almost abandoned sort of village. Um, at this point in time, I didn't know I was already there. And then I saw this old boy. Um, he's a bit deaf, which I found out eventually. And and I approached him, and I, 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 the first thing I said to him, I showed him the photo of my great grandfather with the inscription on it, and then I asked him, Do you remember three brothers who came back to this village in 1989? Do you have any recollection? And he starts thinking about it, and he starts scratching his head, and he goes, and <clears throat> starts grumbling in, in our dialect. Another thing also is when you're back in the village, you, you hear this dialect spoken. Something like my dad, my late father, has been speaking to us all our lives, and you're back where it starts, where this language dialect originated, but it's kind of freaky. And he's, he's, he stood up. Okay, a bit of history. My, my father and his two brothers actually visited the village in 1989, at a time when it was very difficult to travel back into China. Uh, for example, my dad had to establish three years of correspondence with living relatives in the village before a special branch would say, okay, you know, you can go. Just to make, to, 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 to make sure that it's actually legitimate. Um, and so they did in 1989. Um, and this old boy probably been there all his life. And then he remembers some things. He, and then he picked up his phone, his own Nokia phone, and he starts Rambling um, and in 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 Chinese, which is our dialect, and and the first main name he mentioned was my grandfather's name, right? In the dialect, and I thought, hey, one, this is a bit, this is getting warmer, this is getting, you know, we're on the right track. And then he just starts. I have got a video of it, but I, you know, I didn't know it. It's hilarious. And and he puts on the phone. He says, hey, somebody's going to come and see you in five minutes or ten minutes. I just stood there and went, okay, sure. And sure enough, 10 minutes later, a car pulls up, two men and a woman jumps out of it, greets me, and the first name one of the men mentioned was my father's name in the dialect. He said something, something, so new, you know, and I went, Ooh, this is getting more and more bizarre. And then finally it sort of settled on me that it dawned on me that I think I found it. And I was getting very excited. Uh, so yeah, here's me chatting with him, you know, chicken and duck talking. And that's him on the phone, you know, trying to get some of them, you know, someone to come and see me. And these two gentlemen and one of their wives came. Turns out that they were my cousins. So at this point in time, I'm still like, yeah, are you sure? I don't know. You know, the old stories about how the Chinese, the overseas Chinese coming back to the village and everybody's a relative, right? So he's like, oh, yeah, okay. And, um, and then, and then, and then um, this guy here, um, he said, do you want to see your great-grandfather's house? I went, are you joking? You know, really? And he goes, yeah. So he brings me, this is around the corner, he walked through the alleys, and there it is. Well, it's actually the plot of land where my great grandfather came from. This is a shed that's been built, you know, over the years. But that's the plot of land that my great grandfather came from. And you stand there, and you just 
your son beyond words. <laughs> I've cycled all the way here. Didn't expect to find this on day one of the search, and I'm standing in front of my great grandfather's plot lair. I was fainted, you know, but it was a very emotional time. And uh, you know, uh, and then my two cousins then say, hey, do you want to go see your great grandmother's grave? I said, yeah, sure. Because I've heard about all this from our group WhatsApp, our family WhatsApp. I know they have graves, I know my great grandma. But what I didn't know was my great grandma had three wives. Later. Right? So we, we went to search. And we walked through this paddy field adjoining the village. And we climb up hills. Uh, and, uh, and it was difficult. Uh, uh, and these guys, they had brought Chanko with them. Right? So I thought it was a bit of a setup. This can't be real. How can anyone, you know, just come and see me? Five minutes after they got a call, and then they brought Chanko with them. So I thought, hey, it can't be for you. And I found it. You know, they are very simple tombstones. Uh, 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 the graves were very small, very tiny, just a little lump on the ground. And I can't read these scriptures, I'm not sure which is which, uh, who's the source, but I also, they also brought me to go see my great, great grandfather's grave, which is like, you know, not expected. So, so there was one more act I had to do, and, and following all this visit, right, um, I had to, uh, be before, before I left, I visited my grandfather's grave, my grandparents' grave, and I collected some soil. I collected some soil and put them into this little capsule that I hung around my neck for a long trip. And here it is. And I cycled all the way there, and what I did was I planted the soil, the capsule, and hung it on the door where my grandfather's plot of land was. I was actually meant to just spray the soil, but the capsules wouldn't open, so I hung it instead. Right? And um, this was my way of saying, um, I'm bringing them home. They, they, they've left China a long time ago, never went back. Uh, it's not about loyalty, disloyalty to the country or not. It's just like they just left and never had an opportunity to come back. Yeah? Um, and I think, you know, this was something that I had just randomly thought about doing and I was very happy I was able to execute that. Uh, okay, I have interrupt. So now, my cousins had invited me to their home, to his home, and, says, and I said, yeah, sure, okay, so we went. And he's, you know, showing me pictures of his family and whatnot, he starts searching for things. At this point in time, I still wasn't sure, I was quite sure who they were. So the WhatsApp chat with the family was just off the charts, right? It's going bing, 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 you know? And my uncle, who had been to China, had been to the village, was trying to confirm things, yes, no, corroborating the stories. And he goes looking for things, and I'm going, okay. So he pulls out this pictures. That's a picture of one of my siblings' wedding day. And he and I, I'm just discussing with him. And this, all these pictures, was sent to them by my dad. Now this is very, very bizarre. I have just done a long journey on a bicycle to come to this house to see pictures of my family in this home of somebody I never met her or knew in my entire life. This is a picture that took me, you know, stunned me a little bit. That's me. <laughs> this is my dad's 56th birthday. And you know, I, I'm now in China, and someone's home, and looking at a photo of myself. It doesn't get any more bizarre than that, and it was very emotional, I have to admit. And that's another picture of my dad with his god sister who lived in Germany. I took this picture. I'm just looking at him, and my god, I've seen this picture before, many, many years ago, in 1985, as a second. And, you know, so. And so I said to them naturally, hey, come to the city tomorrow, we'll have dinner, bring everyone, you know. And so they did. So, you know, always these Chinese, 
Oh yeah, so you invite the clan to dinner, they bring everybody, right? So yeah, they come back out, 14 of them, went, yeah, right, sure. But it was a great evening. We just ate the best things, and, 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 and I even got my cousin to get on the phone with my uncle. They were chatting away, and, and there was a sense of anxiety for my uncle. We were like, oh, you know, I can't speak to this guy. And it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the best part of this story was, my niece paid for the dinner instead of me. I was going to pay anyway. And she paid it and she said, you know what, forget about it, don't worry about it. She was probably thinking, you know, who's this guy who just cycled, he didn't fly, he cycled, he must be poor. <laughs> so, so they got me dinner and I was feeling very shy because I promised my family that I would, you know, treat them to a nice dinner and all that. And she said to me, in the old days, admittedly, we were, times were very tough for us, but China has changed, look around you, you know, today we are much, much better. And we're well, I think she stopped short and saying we're probably richer than you are, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that's the end of it. We celebrate. Uh, this is Hong Kong. Uh, and I came back to celebrate my mom's 80th birthday. My uncle was there with me. Uh, my uncle, who was, you know, experiencing this, you know, uh, from the background, was there also. And he gave me this scroll. He's an amateur calligraphist, and he gave me a scroll. Uh, which says, I think it means gratitude of, they say, thank you. Oh, it's the other way around. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, for a young person in, in, a, in a very strict Chinese sort of family, right, a very traditional Chinese family, for an elder person, an elder generation to say thank you is very unheard of. And it, it was very, very touching that, uh, that he did, and I think it meant a lot for him. And, Finally, this was a WhatsApp that he had sent, and the content of it essentially is the greatest satisfaction I have received from the whole journey. Thank you. It's very safe, you know, cars don't let you go very fast. Uh, another thing, uh, by the way, uh, my uncle is here. Uh, uh, Mr. Un Chuan Lai is my dad's, well, it's my fifth uncle and was one of the pioneer surgeons and only retired from cutting people up last year at the age of 84. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> I should have the crazy ones on me. <laughs> Hi, I just have a question. Um, I'd like to find out what kind of advice you have for others who would be interested in replicating this thing. I think you can find the. Is it a Uh, by myself? No, no, no. Um, you, 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 you should have at least some sort of 
uh, information, you know, uh, something that might lead you to something, something, I mean, you can't go there blind, I suppose. Uh, I went there almost blind with just nothing except that. But you had like the name of the village to go by, right? I, I did. And even that, you know, the name of the village be became a complicated thing initially, but it actually became easier. Uh, because over time, the names of the villages have changed to all the revolutions and whatnot, right? So they changed, and apparently I was meant to search from the police stations, to ask from the police stations or, or the overseas Chinese, blah, blah, I'm not sure what it was, which was not available there at that time. So I, see, what happened on my trip was I was very lucky. Everything fell into place. Uh, I, I swear, you know, someone was looking after me because I had in three days and I found everything I was looking for in six hours, you know, which is, Madness, right? Uh, what, are, what were the odds that they were there picking up their phone when they looked around and, and things like that? So, you know, um, you, you, you would like to be a bit more, but then the Chinese have a very strong history of uh, 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 keeping records of, of you know, uh, the lineage. So, a good way to find out would be maybe to ask someone older who might still be around, you know. I mean, I'm sure my dad kept a lot of stuff, and he did, you know, a lot of stuff about our history and where we came from and stuff like who our relatives that I can't read it, you know, that, that hindered me. So, yeah, knowing a bit of the Mandarin might help. But it's, it's not the end of the world. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, can you mark that and we see what we do there? Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Would you feel tired if uh, you cycle like 4,300 meters, any kilometers? Uh, yes. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have to rest? Every day. <laughs> I cycle every day and stop at night and I slept. Thank you for um... Yeah. So I probably cycle for like 10 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize as a kid yet, I shouldn't have said anything about the go go bar. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you.